Hello, good evening everybody uh, and welcome to uh, the Verulam Cycling Club's webinar for this evening which is all about getting fit for cycling and this is part of St Albans Sustainability Festival, SustFest for 2021. So my name is Rachel Mackay, I'm one of the, one of the coaches for the Verulam Cycling Club and I'm going to be talking to you about how you get fit for cycling. So, getting fit for cycling. First of all, why do we want to do it? And then uh, we'll be running through um, getting, choosing a goal and setting a target that you might want to do. We'll have a look at uh, equipment uh, that you'll need to get sorted. Uh, how about um, becoming an efficient cyclist? So if you're finding it heavy going at the moment, how, to, how it becomes easier. And also, once you've got a goal, you need some kind of training plan to get you from where you are now to a goal. Um, you need to be uh, thinking about your eating and drinking. Make sure you don't fall over and, uh, and run out of puff. And then after the ride, uh, it's important that you do the right sort of recovery. There'll be then some other bits of random other advice and finally open the floor for questions and answers. So the first question is, why? Why do I need to get fit for cycling? Right. Well, especially as this is all part of the St Albans Sustainability Festival, choosing the bicycle rather than the car. So for, especially for local journeys, cycling rather than driving, especially as the, there's some staggering statistic that something like 80% of journeys are under five miles, which is completely doable by bicycle and actually can often be quicker. Um, you might want to be commuting to work, whether that's commuting to the train station or actually to uh, your office or your place of work. Uh, you might want to start cycling with friends and family. And there might actually be a specific event that you'd like to do, or maybe you've even signed up for it, and now you need to do something about it. <clears throat> so the first thing to do is, if you want to go from where you are now uh, to um, being, being fit for cycling, is get, a, get yourself a goal in mind. There's nothing like having a goal uh, to get yourself motivated. So the ideal kind of goal, it needs to be challenging not daunting so be realistic about it also if you can do something that fits in with your everyday life your work commitments your family commitments and uh, also what you've got available around you <clears throat> don't set a goal that's too far in the future otherwise you'll just lose interest so have something that is going to be achievable within about one to three months and also reward yourself so have have the goal itself either as a specific reward or, or or set up things that will give you that reward along the way so for example um you might um, be comfortable just riding your bike down to the station maybe it takes 10 15 minutes or something like that but you've never actually ridden uh for a whole hour so how about um, going from where you are now, which is you know 10, 15 minutes to the station, to actually going out into the countryside, the lovely countryside around St Albans and Harpenden, and riding comfortably for about an hour, which will give you about 10 miles non-stop. <clears throat> so as I said, to do this, you be, need to set yourself a goal. So when you've got that goal in your head, yes, this is something that's going to take me from where I am now to where I want to be in about that kind of time frame, then it's much better than rather than saying, oh, it's just a random 10 miles, choose a destination, have something that you actually want to get to. For example, there might be a really nice cafe that you want to get to about 10 miles away. Then get your calendar out, put a ring around that day and commit to that time. Uh, to that day and time. For example, it could be four weeks time, eight weeks time, 12 weeks time. Get your maps out and actually plan a suitable route. And this is where local knowledge and also the help of things like uh, the uh, St Albans Council website has actually got um, all the local cycle friendly lanes and cycling routes. So plan a route that's going to take you down quiet country lanes and cycle routes. For example, the Auburn Way, Nicky Line, things like that. So you've got this goal in, in your mind, you're all motivated, you want to do it. So make sure that you're ready and your bike's ready. So this is all the equipment side. So first of all, clothing. Now, we live in, we live in Britain, not Barbados, so we need to dress for the weather. 
Now, amazingly, this week, we've suddenly seemed to have gone from deep winter to the height of summer in two days flat, but we need to be prepared. So uh, in Britain, it's all about layers, being comfortable. Um, have a nice lightweight waterproof jacket handy if it's looking a bit dodgy. And um, it's much better to have um, materials of sportswear that has wicking material, especially for what you wear on top for your T-shirt or your jersey, rather than you know, your favourite um, tour T-shirt made out of thick, heavy cotton. Because thick, heavy cotton will just get sweaty and smelly and wet and dirty and won't actually be very comfortable. Whereas something, um, you know, a nice sports running top or something like that will actually be far more comfortable. Padded shorts, certainly once you start cycling much over 15, 20 minutes, then shorts uh, start to become um, much more essential and uh, the local bike shops sell them. They're not expensive at all. You know, 30 pounds or 30, 40 pounds invested in a pair of shorts is a really, really good investment. And certainly if your goal is to cycle for at least an hour, you will want to wear padded shorts. Even if, as in this picture here, you wear them under a pair of ordinary um, outdoor kind of shorts, they do make a big difference. Shoes, um, assume you've got flat pedals, then a pair of trainers or a pair of casual flat soled shoes will be absolutely fine. And finally, the helmet. If you are going to wear a helmet, then please make sure um, A, it's the right size and it fits your head properly and make sure it's also adjusted properly so the straps are adjusted properly so that it's secure on your head. Uh, if you've got any doubts at all, then go to a local bike shop and they'll help, help you set it, out, set it up. So that's you sorted. What about the bike? So make sure that your bike works properly. Um, we've got plenty of good local bike shops around in, in the local area, Harbord and Redbourne, St Albans. And so make sure your bike's working properly, get it serviced. Um, and another one is pump up your tyres. I mean, certainly when I used to commute to the station, the number of times I saw pancake flat tyres and that just slows you down and eventually you're going to destroy your tyres like that. So pump up your tyres, make sure they're as hard as an apple, squeeze the side, it should feel like an apple, not an orange. And finally, you're going to need a comfortable saddle because, yeah, 10, 15 minutes you can get away with pretty much sitting on anything. Once you start riding for longer than that, you're going to need a comfortable saddle. It doesn't need to be a huge, great squishy thing, but make sure you feel comfortable sitting on your saddle. And again, the local bike shops can advise. And also uh, in things like bike maintenance, um, refer back to the video that we did, the talk that we did earlier this week on bike maintenance. So efficient riding. So unless you're actually riding a single, <coughs> single speed or a fixed gear bike, <coughs> excuse me, then you're going to have plenty of gears to choose from on your bike. So you've got the gears, you're carrying them around, make sure you use them and use them, use them for what they're there to do. They're there to make you more efficient. So the idea is that as you're riding along, you're putting out pretty much a constant, constant effort on the pedals, it should feel comfortable. You shouldn't be grinding a huge, great big gear where it's really, really hard work. And on the other end, you shouldn't be spinning away like a mad thing, like a hamster trying to catch up on a wheel. So the gears are there to, to match your gear, your pedal, your pedal speed to your actual road speed. So it's nice and comfortable. And when we talk about gears, we talk about lower and higher. So a lower gear, is one that's easier to pedal. And when we talk about higher gear, it means it's harder to push. And typically we use the lower or easier gears for going uphill or into a headwind. And when we've got the wind behind us or we're bowling along with the flat, then we can go into a higher gear and that means we can, we can be pedaling faster, but it's still a nice safe, it's nice and nice, easy, comfortable effort. So as I say, you want to be, um, spinning comfortably and easily rather than grinding away and a good way to get your um, leg speed or what we call cadence uh, to a nice comfortable level is singing uh, something like twinkle twinkle little star to yourself and the pace that you um, the beat that you do twinkle twinkle little star to is the rate that you want to be turning your pedals that's a, that's a nice way of remembering it 
and on Cycling UK, which is one of the national cycling organisations. I've got a link here that you can click on and has got some more fantastic tips on how to make your, your cycling really uh, easy and efficient and comfortable. So we've talked about a goal. Uh, we've talked about getting yourself ready, your bike ready and getting uh, and pedaling away. Now, to get from where you are now to where you want to be, you need a training plan. And as that well-known company says, just do it. So if you want to, um, if your goal is to ride further, then get on your bike and start riding. So ride a bit more than you do now. So don't just leave it for, for trying to do one big monster hero ride at the weekend. Do several rides during the week, say three times a week. Uh, so riding regularly and choose opportunities where you can go out and ride your bike. So again, choose the bike rather than driving locally. And great examples are either commuting or doing the shopping or even on the school run if you're uh, confident about uh, shepherding your children to school as well. What you could do is choose a, another destination, for example, a nice cafe just a, two or three miles away and cycle to that and cycle back. And that will get you into the habit of uh, doing these longer and longer rides. Used quiet roads and the cycle pass. We say we've got some great roads around here. We've got the, like, the Alban Way. We've got the uh, St Albans Green Ring. And the link there uh, takes you to the walking and cycling page on the St Albans uh, website, which shows you where all the nice quiet roads are around St Albans and Harpenden. What you want to be doing is each week, try and increase your duration by about 10 minutes each week. So don't worry too much about distance. Think about duration. So if at the moment you're comfortable for cycling for 20 minutes, then next week do 30 minutes, then the following week do 35 to 40 minutes. And before you know it, you're doing a full hour. And also when you're going along, if you're starting to feel a little bit tired and starting to flag a bit, just stop for a minute or so, just pull over to the side of the road, take in the view, um, look at that interesting building and break up your ride with some short rests and then you'll find that really recharges your battery and off you go again. And finally, don't overdo it. So listen to your body. So um, certainly if you're not used to riding and certainly if you're not used to riding regularly, then you are going to feel a little bit tired and a little bit sore and achy after a ride, but it should just be a little bit and it should go by the following day. However, if you're starting to feel any pain or any real fatigue or starting to feel weak, then don't push through the pain. You know that old mantra of no pain, no gain. Well, those days are long gone. Um, you actually want to switch it around and think about gain, not pain. So feeling a little bit tired and achy is normal, providing it goes by the following day. But don't push through anything that's a warning sign and telling you to actually back off and have a rest. And start thinking about eating and drinking as well. So again, 10, 15 minutes, you don't need to eat or drink anything. But as you start riding uh, for longer, then you need to be thinking about what you eat and what you drink. So food is your fuel. And I've, uh, there's a really nice phrase. Uh, eating should fuel you up, not fill you up. So um, it's about uh, good hydration, good nutrition. And this is actually an ideal opportunity to uh, have a look at your diet and maybe uh, improve it, maybe clean it up a bit. So start cutting down on all those uh, sugars and start drinking some more water. So again, if you're, if you're really going for that one hour, then you want to be um, drinking a, a bottle of water, up to a bottle of water in an hour, especially when it's uh, hot weather, hot, dry, sunny weather like this. And think about the snacks that you eat on a bike. Uh, so it's good, wholesome, carbohydrate-based snacks. Cut down on the sugars. Um, so things like oat-based muesli bars and flat flapjacks, not just um, instant sugary hits. And then when you come in from the ride, uh, you need to recover properly. So don't just dump the bike and sit on the sofa or whatever. Think about um, actually um, winding down from a ride and getting the full benefit from it. So uh, a bit of post-ride stretching uh, is a really good idea. So you should be always, always uh, stretch when you're warm. The rule is, uh, the absolute rule is never stretch a cold muscle because that is a surefire way that you're going to be pulling something and that will be putting you out of action. Um, 
post-rise stretching, the best time to do it is this golden hour after getting home. That's when you want to be doing your stretching because your body's still warm, your muscles are still warm and they're going to stretch nicely. And on the following slide, I've got this 11 minute essential post-ride routine. I did try and get it down to 10 minutes, but uh, it just leaks over into 11, okay? Another fantastic form of recovery is making sure you get really good sleep. So if you can get eight hours of really good sleep a night, that's actually one of your best recovery tools. And to do that, make sure you've got good sleep hygiene. So it's all the usual stuff like have a nice cool room, have an early supper, don't be eating late, don't be eating heavy foods late. Make sure you wind down and relax. And again, part of your recovery is all about eating and drinking. So again, hydration after a ride. So good hydrating uh, drinks like water and juice. You can have tea and coffee as well, but keep making sure you keep drinking that water and have a healthy balanced meal as well. So again, don't just dive into the, the chocolate bars or the cakes, um, have a good healthy balanced meal. So as I promised, here's your 11 minute post-ride stretching routine. So we start off with uh, your quadriceps up here so you just pull your leg behind you and stretch gently uh, each one of these stretches what you want to be doing is getting yourself into position just holding the stretch for 30 seconds go around the sequence once and then go around the sequence again and that's your 11 minutes done so the ones we stretch are the quadriceps the gluteals which are your buttock muscles that's knee over and then just pulling your knee up towards your chest. You can re get a really nice stretch there on your gluteals. You need to be doing your calf and your Achilles. So that's both a straight leg stretch and also a bent leg or a bent knee stretch to get down into the Achilles. What's also really um, you'll find possibly getting a bit sore when you're cycling is the inside of your thigh muscles. These are called the adductors and also your lower back. So this what we call a butterfly stretch is brilliant for that. And finally, the hamstrings. So good one here. Really stretch those hamstrings. And I say what you do here to get, get the full routine is you hold each stretch for 30 seconds. Go around the sequence once go around the sequence again, and then that's exactly 11 minutes. And the best time to do that is fit it in in that golden hour when you've come home from your ride. And then a final bit of other advice is um, be prepared for mishaps. So every ride isn't necessarily going to go absolutely swimmingly, something will happen. So if you were listening to Andy's talk uh, earlier, this Andy or Martin's talk earlier this week, then I'll be talking about making sure you've got a, a decent toolkit with you that you can tighten up any little nuts and bolts. Make sure you can repair your own puncture as well, because unfortunately they do happen. And absolutely worst case happens, uh, you need to either phone a friend or a taxi to get you home. Uh, another great bit of advice, especially if you're not um, used to, to cycling on, on the roads or cycling on busier roads, is now's a really great time to brush up on the highway code. Because as cyclists, we have exactly the same rights as any other vehicle, own, uh, any other vehicle driver, cars, lorries, motorbikes, whatever. We are all treated the same. So whatever a car can do, we as cyclists can do as well. So, um, but what it does mean is that um, we're actually much more vulnerable when it comes out to things like poor road surfaces. So do keep an eye out for those potholes and other hazards like gravel and curbs that leap out from the side of the road and things like that. Um, so what this means is you need to have that awareness. And if you are going to move, make sure you're always looking, always observing, be aware of what's going on behind you as well as what's in front of you and do clear signaling to other road users, exactly the same as you would in a car. If you've got a friend who's an experienced cyclist, then that's actually one of the best ways to gain, uh, boost your confidence and learn all about these little hints and tips. Uh, if you want to take it even further, then through Hertfordshire County Council, um, you can actually get one-to-one -one cycling instruction. Uh, this is for adults as well as children. People, you know, people have heard of bike ability for children. Well, that same cycling instruction is also open to adults as well. And finally, there's a couple of uh, great cycling organisations in uh, Britain. One is Cycling UK and the other is British Cycling, um, both of um, if you actually join those organizations then you get third party insurance 
uh, and also they're great places where you can get lots of advice and hints and tips on how to make your cycling better and easier. So that's the end of the formal presentation and I'd like to welcome any questions from the floor. Oh. So, um, yes, I do have a couple of questions. Um, is, there, um, is there any kind of warm up thing that would be useful before you ride? Right, well, that's very interesting. Um, so, um, if you're, if certainly if you're coming from things like running and, and even swimming, uh, then warm up is actually a very essential part of the exercise. But actually with cycling, um, then the answer is no, just get on your bike. Um, unless, you know, unless you're doing really high end racing, like uh, riding, like racing, where you would actually do a specific warm up because you're uh, working at a really, really high level. Just literally getting on your bike and cycling out of the drive, taking it easy, um, sticking it into a low gear for the first 10 minutes or so and just easing yourself in is actually enough of a warm up is, is really all you need. If you are uh, you know, a bit bit tight or a bit, um, you know, maybe you've got um, arthritis or something like that, then uh, you might benefit actually from a you know, bit of joint mobilization. So things like um, rolling your ankles, rolling your hips, things like that for a couple of minutes before you get on the bike. Mm -hmm. But really, you don't need to do any sort of specific formal warm up like you would as if you were about to set off on a, on a run, because that's going from sedentary to actually um, even even run it, you know, even, um, you know, jogging level of running is actually quite a lot of exercise compared to cycling, which is actually um, quite low level. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think actually getting getting the bike out extracting it from the shed is quite a bit of exercise well, there you go yes you're doing a lot of bending carry it shed, down yeah. some steps well there you go yes yeah but have uh, you got any tips on exercises to improve your cadence specifically other than doing it on the bike is there anything else that can help to improve cadence Right, so cadence is, uh, is, is a speed that you turn the pedals, right? And the idea is that um, cycling efficiency, um, you actually, if you want to cycle efficiently, you, then you actually want to get um, your, your cadence, your, your, cycle, your pedaling speed up to, a, you know, up to somewhere between 80 to 90 um, revolutions a, a minute, okay? Which is, you know, if you sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, that will give you about that rate. Um, if you're starting from a very low base, then um, you could actually try um, little bouts of just running on the spot. So start off just running gently on the spot and then just getting faster and faster and faster, picking your knees up until you're going as fast as you can, you know, warm up, go up, go up a pyramid, pyramid for about 10 seconds and then start winding back down to just walking on the spot. 10-15 seconds and then do that a few times and then you'll find that it gets easier and you'll in fact particularly your lower back so one of the things that stops people getting um, a higher cadence is actually quite quite a tight lower back so um, that, that yeah. might be my problem having sat at a desk for many years I right. really struggle cadence yeah. yes yes okay so tight back is is, is very much limit um uh related to things like um how flexible you are so how far over you can bend and what kind of posture you have on the on the bike and also if you've got a very tight back um then yes your cadence is going to be low so anything you can do to stretch the glutes and the hamstrings in particular that will also improve your cadence okay thank help? you yep thank you rachel mm -hmm. It's um, interesting that there are um, the lessons that are available. One that would that one to one, you were saying from yes. So basically, through uh, Hertfordshire County Council, mm -hmm. um, they uh, um, there there are cycling instructors who are employed by or um, give their services uh, through through every county in, in through Britain. Um, it's uh, and uh, these cycling schemes 
so these instructors, they're, they're, they're freelance, um, but you can uh, hire their services through the council. And they, the, these are the instructors that do um, the bikeability schemes through um, schools. So you start off in, um, in infant school, take them up to um, whatever it is, year, uh, year five and six. Uh, but they also do adult training, both in groups and also individual one-to-one -one basis. So if you go onto the Hertfordshire Council, uh, Hertfordshire County Council website, click on that link there, then you get to a page where you can actually register uh, and ask for um, uh, to be put in touch with uh, some local instructors who will take you out on a one-to-one -one basis. Mm -hmm. Are they doing that at the moment, or uh, is it paused due to? No, no. It's all. It's as far as I know, it has restarted again. So mm. bike ability has restarted mm -hmm. in the schools, yeah. and also adult adult cycle cycle training has restarted again because okay. it, it's, it's outdoors. It's not indoors. It's outdoors on the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have quite a lot of trouble um, knowing which is the right gear to be in. It doesn't come automatically to me. And, and often I think I've, I've gone and switched two gears instead of one and don't realize it until I've been pedaling a bit and realize it's not, it's not right. Absolutely, yes, yes. So this thing about just getting that feel is, um, I mean, a good tip is if it starts feeling a bit hard and chuggy, um, then just drop it down the gear. So, so the same if, you, if you're a car driver, um, you wouldn't keep the keep the car in first gear when you're going around the um, you know down dual carriageway at 50 miles an hour. And similarly, if you're going up Blue House Hill, um, you wouldn't be in fourth gear. Yeah. Because you know your engine will just be straining too much and possibly even stall. Mm. So it's just getting that balance right. And again, you know, the more you cycle, the more you'll be able to fine tune those gears and then instinctively know oh that one's just feeling a little bit hard I'm just going to drop it back or actually oh I'm pedaling a bit a little bit starting to spin out here starting to pedal a bit faster oh I can now go up a gear and oh there's a bit of a tailwind I can start um, getting a bit of a lick on here and uh, and enjoy enjoy the free ride. Mm, yeah yes because at the moment I think I I adjust I adjust to the gear I'm in rather than the other way around. Uh, yes. Well, you see, this is it. So the gears are there to help you. Mm -hmm. So you're carrying around. So so make the most use of them. And they're, what yeah. they're there for is to make your, uh, you know, make you more efficient. So if you you choose the right gear for the conditions, um, then it's going to make you a lot more efficient mm, and yeah. also a lot less tired as well. So you'll be able to go further. Mm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's mostly because um, just operating the cha the gear change, I find, is um, is quite awkward on my bike. Right. And, what what um, kind of what kind of gear change do you have? Uh, it's it's just a a, a a circle that you turn backwards and forwards. Right. Yes. The... It's, so it's on it's on the it's a uh, it's a basically a grip shift. So you either go yes. forwards yeah, or backwards like that. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even marked on it. Ah, so I'm, right. I don't know which which gear I'm in, just only by the feel of it or by yeah. looking down. And I'm not very good at looking down because I'm not good at balance. So right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a bit hidden miss. And there's there's one thing actually allied to that, and that is if I find that I've actually stopped in entirely the wrong gear, I don't know quite how because I know you can really mess your bike up by switching gears when you're not actually pedaling on it but um i feel there must be a way of being able to to get back into the right gear without actually being on the bike if i'm in too high a gear to start off um yes so what you can do there if you, if you really have completely got it wrong you've ended mm -hmm. up in your biggest gear yeah. you're at the bottom of a hill that goes up then you really do want to uh, get off your bike. So, so, the, so the way to do that is just get off your bike, pick it up by the saddle, start turning the pedals, and then, and then what you want to do is just click down one gear at a time, turn the pedal, click down another gear, turn the pedal, click down a gear and turn the pedal until you're in a comfortable gear, and then set off again. Mm, that sounds as though you need three hands to do that. Yeah, sort of. Andy, do you want to jump in? 
Well, uh, <clears throat> if you've got um, an indexed gear, it should click and move the mechanical adjuster, and then you can pick it up and spin the one pedal. You don't have to be moving the gear, spinning the wheel, and lifting it up at the same time. Yeah. So you have to do three things, but you only need to do them one and then in a two, if you get my drift. So which, so first of you, all, I... You twist the gear to... Yeah. <clears throat> that will make mechanical movement yes. within the, the gear change. Yes. But it won't change the gear until you pick the saddle up and spin the wheel. And, oh, ah, it, right, okay. Because yeah. the chain's got to be picked, the chain's yes. got to pick up the cog. Yeah. So yeah. the movement that uh, moves the chain backwards and forwards will yeah. move with just the click of the gear. Yeah. Pick the bike up, spin the pedal, yeah. then yeah. the chain will engage. Click it, okay. put it down, click it, and it will move up. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was going to say earlier that the secret to think about efficient cycling is unlike a car, is you've got to think about changing the gears as you come up to yes. an obstruction, yeah. a junction, mm -hmm. because you can't mm -hmm. shift it round the box and yes. still pedal. I mean, yes. I have seen people do this in the wrong gear get half a turn of the pedal and then fall over sideways because mm. the, the gear is bigger than their legs and they can't spin it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a matter of thinking forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. Turn around, go back down the hill, get your gears right and yeah. start again. <laughs> that, is, yeah. that, is also, that is also an option if you've got halfway up a hill and you can't make the gear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so there is a bit, so there's actually a bit, uh, an element of a bit more planning ahead when you're cycling. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's um, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good, actually, because then it makes you know, it means that you're getting more involved in your environment. You're getting more aware of your surroundings, you know, because it's very easy. You know, we, we jump into our cars. They're a, they're a metal box, especially if all the windows are closed and you've got the radio on or something. And you can also you know, sort of um, go into this little world and spending about 5% attention on the road. It should be a lot more than that, but you know, we, we've all been there. And, uh, and basically you can sort of crash and bang your car and it will sort of get, get from A to B. Whereas when you're cycling, you're very much more part of what's going on around you. You can actually smell what's going on around you. You can see what's going on around you. Uh, you can hear what's going on around you as well. You get all your senses involved. Uh, you feel the weather on your skin. You feel the sun on your skin. Isn't that so nice? A nice little bit of gentle breeze. So it's much more involving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have a friend who coaches uh, canoeing and mountain biking, and it's the same for most sports. He says there are, there are three elements that you're looking at all the time. It's called there, here, and now. And you should pole backwards and forwards. So there is where you're going, the long look ahead. Here is any obstacles or changes of direction that are coming towards you. And then the now is the very occasional, yeah, I missed that pothole. So, you know, I'm mm. going to turn left quarter of a mile up the road or there's a big pothole I can see coming up so that you don't hit those obstacles um, as a surprise. You know, mm. I think a lot of a lot of people drop their bike into a pothole because they're used to a car where a pothole isn't necessarily a big issue. You sort of ride th drive through them and you don't necessarily think about them. But <clears throat> on a bike, what a car will sail through can give you a puncture quite easily, and if it's a really big hole, it can uh, throw you off the bike. So you you need to be looking for these things. So you can't you can't forward to be staring at the ground looking for the pothole because you won't have enough time to react and you also need to be looking far enough forward to change the gear for the junction or whatever you're coming up to so you just need to keep looking at these three parts of the road mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, what what about cycling in wet conditions um what would you say are the important things to consider there? 
well the fir the first one is definitely your clothing and your comfort because basically the bike you can leave your bicycle out in the rain okay it might get a bit sad and a bit rusty eventually but it will survive um uh, but if you're out there in the rain and it's just the same as if you're walking somewhere you wouldn't walk in a, out in the rain just wearing you know a t-shirt and shorts and flip-flops you would be dressed accordingly so it's the same on a bicycle make sure you've got some decent wet weather gear uh, it doesn't need to be big, thick and bulky, not your big winter anorak or anything like that. So there's good, you know, lightweight, waterproof um, jackets and things like that. Um, but um, so keeping yourself warm, dry and comfortable is is a must. And also another really good one is if you haven't already got them fitted and you know you're going to be riding, certainly if you're going to be riding all year round, um, then get a pair of good mud guards fitted because... Um, it's not just throwing up spray to the people behind you. Um, all that spray and muddy water ends up going up uh, up onto your shorts and up your back as well. And it's mm -hmm. extremely unpleasant. And also all that muddy water then just makes a mess of your um, your your chain sets or, or your lovely gears and uh, will end up wearing them out much quicker than, you sh uh, than they should do. So, so the first thing is your comfort, because once you get cold and wet on a bicycle, it's utterly miserable and... Uh, and if you're a long way from home, you could you could be in a bit of trouble as well. Mm. Uh, and then the other yeah. one is um, make sure your tyres are in good condition. So um, make sure you've got some good quality tyres that will actually grip the road properly uh, and make sure they're inflated properly. Not, not too hard, um, but don't have them too soft as well. And then thirdly, when you're riding in the rain, potholes are an absolute nightmare. Because if you've got standing water on the road, you don't know whether it's just a little bit of standing water mm. or there's a huge, great big four inch pothole that, you know, you could have a bath in. So, mm. you know, avoid standing water and things like um, anything that's shiny as well. So like manhole covers and um, any uh, road markings that are painted. So, so white lines are another classic. So, again, mm. this is where being an assertive um road user asserting your position in the middle of the road not being thrown over to the side um, is going to really help because you are part of the traffic uh, you need to be out there you don't want to be in the gutter where it's all um, horrible and full of potholes and uh, slippery lines so again this is where um you know this this maybe this cycling coaching would actually come into its own because they will teach you how to ride safely and confidently in traffic uh, holding what we call the primary position and being aware of all, everything that's going around you and um, also being being part of the traffic and signaling to other road users and i think the other thing if you like the mud guards if you think you're going to be cycling regularly in the rain then a front and back light even in daylight makes you much more visible and i think along with that visibility you perhaps need to be a little more aware of what cars are doing especially at junctions where they might not be seeing you as well their visibility is obscured by the windscreen wiper the any spray on their side windows so uh, you have to just watch out and be a bit careful that they've seen you mm. um, the old say old cycle saying is you know look them in the eye make sure you see the whites of their eyes so what, what you really want to see them do is have a good look and look back not a quick glance because if it's a quick glance they may miss you so mm, mm. you almost want to make eye contact with anyone at a junction um, and certainly on roundabouts <clears throat> coming back from a club run I cross a busy roundabout and I always look every driver coming up to the entrance before I pull off to make sure they've looked to the right and have seen me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that help and make, make you feel a bit more confident? I think, well, it'll, I think it'll be a while before I'm doing roundabouts and, and so forth. <laughs> As I say, I'm um, a very cautious, um, not confident cyclist. But, it, but it's great that you've come along to this evening because this, you know, this is exactly... Um, uh, you know what the, who this uh, this presentation is uh, this evening is aimed for so uh, hopefully this will give you the uh, the confidence to to get out there to hop on your bike to cycle into town and uh, maybe um, join up with the um, Hearts County Council or um, one of the other organizations hmm. yes I, I, I belong to um, 
uh, St Albans District Cyclist, or was it Hearts County Council? It's one of those ones, anyway. I can't remember. If I saw if I saw the acronym, I'd probably recognise which it was. Back. Oh, St. yeah, St Albans, St. Albans Cycle Campaign. campaign. Is that, that it? Ah, uh, yes, it probably is that one. Yes, yeah. an Auburn cycle so. campaign. Yeah, they're they're, mm -hmm. they're great because uh, they they take out. In fact, I don't know if they've started yet, but um, they certainly used to do um, family friendly and and group rides um, locally. Mm -hmm. I think five miles to fabulous is one of those offshoots, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. No, it's been good. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, um. I think a place like St Albans is difficult. Um, I expect if, you know, I'd been taking up cycling again in a, a new town environment, it would have been a great deal faster um, with cycle tracks all over the place. But um, they've, they've done their best to try and um, campaign for, uh, traffic free or or um accommodate that yes it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very diff getting diff better. difficult city to um oh, yeah. to get around in yes i mean it's a lot better than it used to be but uh, yes mm -hmm. there's, yeah there's always there's, <clears throat> there's always room for improvement so especially in a an old old place like st albans but, uh, okay well, thank, right, you. Well, yeah, thank no, you thank you everyone for the for the track, track, uh, there is a you can cycle from certainly from Wheatamstead all the way to Luton Airport, so there are plenty of tracks around the Nicky Line, the uh, the old Wheatamstead Luton Line Auburn Way. Yeah, spend time on spend time on them. Getting confident handling the bike will uh, help yeah. you then move out onto bigger roads. Yes, yes, I've got well the the map is good from that point of view for that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Right, well, Great presentation, for, uh, Rachel. Thank putting, you. putting this on. And thank um, you, Rachel. Uh, I, I, are we still recording? Right, that's what I'm just going to say. Thank you. I'm just going to wind up now. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining this evening. And uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. And uh, hopefully it will be available somewhere on the internet for people to be able yes. to listen to later. Yes.